Thank you. Hi, I'm Thor. I work on developer experience at Superbase. Now, before we jump in, can I get a quick show of hands? Uh, who here creates software for a living? OK, a bunch of folks. And uh, keep your hand up if you really enjoy writing database migrations. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. Um, and that's exactly why we've created database.build, the AI-powered Postgres playground in the browser. Now, you can think of it like ChatGPT's code interpreter, but for Postgres. Giving an AI model full autonomy over the database means that it can run multiple operations back to back without delay. It makes AI feel even more human-like and useful. This novel experience is only possible thanks to GPT-4O's incredible understanding of Postgres and SQL paired with a disposable in-browser database. So we don't have to worry about data loss, and we can just let the model run wild. So if you want to play along, you can just go to database.build. And um, let's do some live demo here. Uh, I did some offerings to the demo gods earlier, so let's track some movies. So we can just fire that off, and we can see now we're going to GPT-4.0. Uh, we're getting some SQL. We're running that SQL. And the SQL that we're getting back from the model, we are running it directly on the database that is running in the browser. So this is using PG Lite, um, which is running Postgres in the browser through WASM. Uh, and then we can see here, OK, the movies table has been created. Fantastic. So that's it. We got our first migration uh, in the box. Now, how are we able to give the model so much autonomy? And really, the secret sauce here is tool calling. So we use tool calls not only to execute SQL in PG Lite, but also to perform other actions that you would normally only find kind of in the graphical user interface. OK, let's dive a bit deeper under the hood to see kind of what's happening. Uh, we're using the Vercel AI SDK here, and it's been a great open source tool to iterate quickly. Uh, and actually, this is the new uh, Ray.so OpenAI theme. Uh, I think it was released yesterday, so a uh, big shout out to Edwin and the, the Ray team for making that uh, open. So you can get some really nice code screenshots there. And of course, like the rest of Superbase, this is open source as well. So you can jump in and have a look uh, later yourself. But so this is where the magic happens. So OnToolCall provides the client side tools that the model can automatically invoke. And max steps defines a limit in case we get kind of stuck in an infinite loop. So let's take the example of the execute SQL tool call here. Um, we set up our tool call schema kind of using sort uh, in TypeScript. And then we have a use on tool call hook, which implements the tool functionality. So we sanitize the response a bit and then return the query results uh, and the updated schema here. So let's step through our demo earlier where we kind of said we want to track some movies. So initially we make an artificial tool call uh, to get the database schema and share that as context with um, the model together with kind of the user's message here, uh, which just says track some movies. Um, and so in the response, we get the execute SQL tool call uh, together with our create table SQL, which we then um, immediately kind of run on the database. So we're running that query client site in the in-browser database, and then we feed the query results and the updated schema back to the model to generate kind of the streaming response that we saw here, where it says the movies table has been created, and we render that to the UI. And lastly, um, in a final step, we ask the model to rename the conversation and with that, our database. Uh, and so we see here the conversation was renamed to movie tracking database. And that's our final tool call here. And these are just happening back to back with kind of any user interaction. So, so as you can see, with kind of all the functionality being tool calls, that means the model has a lot of autonomy to chain various tools together. Uh, and this also enables the application to self-heal. 
for example, any SQL errors from Postgres are fed back to the language model so that it can try a few more attempts at kind of solving um, the issue. Another really cool feature uh, here is the inbuilt, um, in, uh, the, the built-in vector embedding support using PG Vector and Transformers JS. So let's go back to our demo and actually say, add five movies um, and embeddings on their titles. And so, ah, I probably should be typing, add five movie examples and embeddings on their titles. So we're going to fire this off and we're going to run again kind of our multi-step um, models here, hopefully. Come on. No. Okay, I think we, we might have ran into an issue here. So, so what it should do is, let me quickly reload that if we can recover. Okay, I get my demo god offerings weren't accepted. Let's try it again, see? Okay, we're working on it. And so now you can see we're first um, executing our SQL to kind of seed some sample data in our database. And then in the next step, we're generating the embeddings for all the titles, and we're storing them in a separate database because if you worked with vector embeddings before, even with small models and you know, smaller dimensions, these are pretty large, so we kind of want to keep them outside. And you can see, okay, we got kind of five movies in here. And now what we can do is by having the embeddings um, in the database as well, we can do semantic search, right? So we can say use semantic search to find a movie about Batman. Okay, and so now we're gonna go off. Again, we're running a couple steps back to back. Uh, so we're going to generate embeddings, you know, for Batman. And then what we're doing here is, so we're using PG vector um, to perform cosine distance to find kind of all the movies that are related to Batman, and then we get back, okay, The Dark Knight. Fantastic, so we have, um, you know, semantic search built into this tool, a really, really neat, really neat feature here. Now, just like Copy and T make for a great drink, so does mixing a traditional graphical user interface with a large language model. So all of the actions in the UI are implemented as tool calls. And when an action is clicked in the user interface, we simply fire off a message in the chat and let the model handle the rest. Now, a little warning, while this is great for your user experience and iterating quickly, it's not so great for your wallet. So do watch out for that. Another great feature here, charts. So we're using Chart.js here, uh, one of the more mature charting libraries available in JavaScript. And the reason we chose it is because GPT-40 has a really good understanding of the syntax and configuration. So by simply chatting to the model, you can fully customize kind of anything that you can do with Chart.js. You can change um, the chart type, the axis, the colors. Uh, so as long as Chart.js supports it, uh, GPT-40 can make it happen. Lastly, quick look at impact and next steps here. So we were able to sign up more than 60,000 users in three months. So I think there's definitely something here. Um, we've also just launched LiveShare, which allows you to connect to your in-browser database from any Postgres client. Um, we just published a blog post about this. The tech um, is really, really fantastic. So do check that out. Um, a bunch more interesting stuff happening, but that's pretty much all I have time for. So if you have any questions, just find me later. But the gist I want you to take away is that tool calls plus full database access make for a pretty powerful Postgres sandbox. Thank you.